Welcome to section number one, primary energy. And in here, we're going to be talking about, of course, the big players in consumption, the big players in production, the different type of fuels, and how trends, technologies, and processes are shifting in 2023. So let's get started. Now, I need to warn you, this is going to be a long lecture with a lot of data, but all the data is very important. This will be like the fundamentals of the course, because this is going to be the set point in which you will be able to compare other energies. So ensure not to skip this lecture. Now, from 2022, we saw a 1% increase in the total primary energy consumption. Now, this is a concept that you will be hearing a lot. Total primary energy consumption is the energy that is used as the first intent as energy, taking it to around 3% above the 2019 pre-COVID level. So as stated before, we have been growing approximately 1% every year. So 2019, then we had 2020, which is 1%, and then 2021, which is another percent, and 2022, which is another percent. Hence, we are stating that 3% above previous levels of COVID pandemic. Renewables, excluding hydroelectricity, share of primary energy consumption has reached 7.5% which is great. Of all the percentage of energies, 7.5% of solar and wind energy mostly. Fossil fuel consumption as a percentage of primary energy remains still as 82%, as stated before. Primary energy demand growth slowed compared to 2021. This is very important to consider, mostly because the increases in prices of fuels. Now, as you can see here, 1.1 percentage of use compared to the 5.5% of 2021. Of course, comparing 2020 versus 2021 is not a fair statement because there was a pandemic and then the recovery. Now, between 2021 and 2022, we have the difference that we were in a recovery year versus a economic crisis year. Primary energy in 2022 was 16 exajoules above 2019 pre-COVID levels, with the consumption increasing in all regions apart from Europe and seas. This is region, we're going to cover it later on, but it's essentially all those countries between Turkey and Russia. We're talking about Georgia, we're talking about Kazakhstan and other similar countries. Now, from this graph, we can see the global share of primary energy. This, as stated before, we're going to be comparing several years. So I will strongly recommend you to compare at least maybe from 2018 onwards. We have oil, which is right here. We have hydroelectricity, which remains stagnant. We have coal, which is decreasing, still kind of stagnant between 2018 and so. We have renewables, which is growing. Steady before, we are currently in the 7.5 mark, still low. We need this to be at least 70% in the near future. So let's see how it goes. Nuclear energy decreasing in trend, hopefully in the next years with all this geopolitics tension and problems with the natural gas from Russia and so on, nuclear energy converts into a new source, so let's say not a new source, but a interesting source to explore in the countries. Then we have natural gas, which has been increasing, but decreased drastically this year because of the increased prices due to the Ukrainian-Russian war. Since 2019, primary energy consumption in the non-OECD countries increased by just 20 exajoules. Now, I will say that we are going to be covering three main groups. It's the OPEP group, which is essentially all those oil exporter countries, uh, Middle East, Venezuela. Non-OPEP are all the countries that are not from that organization. Then we have OECD, which are the developed countries, let it be mostly European countries, USA, Canada, Australia, those countries. Then we have non-OECD, which are these ones right here, essentially all the other countries. Now, this has been driven largely by the growth in China, accounting for 72% increase. So yes, as you can see, China is still growing at accelerated paces. Now, talking of which, the OECD countries actually still remain kind of stagnant. Back in 2019, we had 288 exajoules, and now, 2022, we had 234, actually a small decrease. The increase in primary energy supply between 2019 and 22 was largely driven by the renewables, mostly in Europe, and coal. Kind of interesting to see 
how coal is sometimes substituting the task of natural gas. So let's go to this graph. We have the world consumption of energy in exajoules. So first things first, what we want to analyze are these big chunks right here. And yes, crude oil, essentially gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, kerosene, uh, asphalt, all these products that come from crude oil are still being like the biggest chunk for the world. Then we have this part right here, which should be natural gas. Where is it? Yes, natural gas, which is the second most used fuel nowadays, or at least competing versus coal. Right, let's see coal right here. So this is also a big chunk. So we got coal, natural gas, and crude oil. Most of the energy, 82%, is fossil fuel related. Then we have a little bit on nuclear. Then we have renewables, which is thankfully growing. And finally, hydroelectricity. If you're into economics, we can compare a little bit more into GDP growth. Before, it was strongly related that GDP goes versus the pricing in the regional areas of energy, but that is no longer the case. So actually you can see, continue to decouple from energy. So let's see the graph right here. So we have this big one, which is China, decreasing drastically. Then we have this one right here, which is the Uni European Union. And we have the US. Now, another interesting country to analyze and getting more relevant because of BRICS is India. So quite worth checking out India. In this report, we're going to analyze Russia. We're going to be analyzing Europe, USA, Latin America, but more importantly, the BRICS country, which is Brazil, India, China, and other countries. Now let's talk about power, essentially power generation. And remember when we talk about power, it's essentially electricity. The king of kings has been coal. You can see this here. But in the recent years, let's say 10 years, gas or natural gas has been growing as a trend in the generation of energy. Now, interestingly, oil is not quite important. You will see that oil is actually not used towards the production of electricity, rather for fossil fuels for transportation, which is very important. Then we have hydroelectricity, which still remains very important for electricity generation. And what I like the most is the trend of renewables getting more relevant for the generation of electricity. And just in case you wanted to compare fossil fuel versus non-fossil fuel, you can do it here. So fossil fuel has been decreasing slowly, which is great. And what I like the most is, as stated before, renewables are taking over slowly. Change in primary energy by fuel. Now, remember primary energy is the energy that we search for at the first glance. And yes, what you can see the most is this big chunk right here. We have a negative decrease because transportation stagnated in 2020 because of the COVID pandemic. So oil was the one that got hit the most. But at the same time, the recovery 2021. So you can see these parts right here. This is a irrelevant year to analyze. The interesting parts will be when we get back to basics. So these years were interesting to analyze. See how coal has been decreasing in several years. Actually, I would say coal has been decreasing since the 2015. Until the pandemic hit, we see a recovery of coal. Now let me clean this up. I will strongly recommend you to check this out for every fuel yourself. By now, I just did it for coal, crude oil, but try to do it for renewables, try to do it for nuclear, and of course, for natural gas. Now, as stated before, we need to do this by geography as well. So OECD, these are the so-called developed countries. Non-OECD countries are here. Let's analyze first the developed countries right here. And you will see that, yes, they had the worst spike in energy changes. Try to imagine why. Well, of course, the developed countries are the ones that are using the most energy for transportation, for business, for industry, for domestic transportation, for aviation, for energy production, and so on. So that's why when the world stopped, you will see that this is the worst decrease for the developed country. But at the same time, the recovery has been awesome. Now, let's continue. Primary energy was 2.8% above 2019 levels, 1% per year. Primary energy split shows increased variation across region. And this is one of the best things that I want you to analyze. Remember that we're talking about energy, global trends, but also on geopolitics or regional changes of fuel. So try to see where are renewables growing, where are renewables very big, 
where is coal still stagnant or maybe even growing. Remember that nowadays coal is uh, vilified because it has a lot of carbon emissions. And yeah, essentially let's do this very quickly. I will strongly recommend you to keep doing this as we go along, maybe pause the video and continue with another region. Let's go for the US. So from this graph right here, we can see that coal has been decreasing for the US. Crude oil slightly decreased. Remember that nowadays uh, there's a big push in the US for the investment and growing and supporting of the oil industry. So that's interesting to see. Natural gas has been growing as well. Remember that natural gas has been seen as this fuel or magic material to work with because it's very clean, but at the same time has a lot of energy. Then nuclear has been slightly decreasing in the US, renewables slightly increasing, and hydroelectric stagnant. Now, maybe you want to do this for China. Maybe you want to do this for India. Maybe you want to do this for Europe. I'm going to be choosing maybe China because this is one of the interesting topic comparing USA and China. But India is something worth checking out as well. Now, going to China is still very reliable on coal. So we are talking about maybe 60% back in 2012 was 70%. So they are doing great in reducing the coal percentage. Oil still remains a big chunk of the percentage from maybe this is approximately 20%. Natural gas is growing, but still I would say that coal and crude oil are the most relevant fuels for China. Now, more importantly, I would say that China has been betting in the renewable energy sources which is definitely worth for them because they don't need to be dependent on imports of energy. So try to think this always. Why is the country betting towards coal, towards crude oil, towards renewables, towards nuclear, and so on? For instance, you could see that in India, there is no interest at all to change the composition, the coal dependence or the crude oil dependence. And yeah, there's a small increase in renewables, but almost irrelevant to consider. Now, if you want to get a little bit more in depth into regions, I will definitely recommend you to check this chart. We're going to be analyzing overall regions. So now we are not talking about USA. It's now going to be Canada, USA, and Mexico for North America. Then we have South and Central America. Then we have Total Europe. Then we have the seas, which includes Russia, Kazakhstan, Georgia, all these little countries between Russia and Turkey. Quite relevant to analyze. Then we have Total Middle East. Then we have Africa and then Asia Pacific. Now we could make a lot of conclusions here. Uh, first thing first, Middle East is a beast compared to other countries when we're talking about crude oil and natural gas. So up to 97, 98% of their consumption is crude oil alone. They don't need to be importing any other type of fuels because they produce their fuels themselves. Another aspect to consider is of course the natural gas chunk right here from the cis region also we have a kind of one-to-one -one ratio of natural gas versus crude oil in north america which is quite unique before it was mostly towards crude oil and as time has been passing uh, you have seen this relationship towards natural gas and crude oils hydroelectricity is very interesting to see very huge chunk of hydroelectricity actually almost 25 percent which is great now, nuclear, yes, for sure, gotta be Europe, mostly France, Germany. And finally, we want to analyze coal. This must be mostly China, but other countries as well. We are seeing the most coal split here. And I will encourage you to continue making this type of analysis, guys. Try to deepen your analysis, compare between countries, why several type of regions will prefer certain type of fuels. Well, mostly because they are producing it, so essentially just keep analyzing the graph and draw conclusions.